Hello! I hope that you all are having fun at the Harvest Festival. My name is Carrie and I work with Tilt Alliance and I am here at the Rainier Beach Urban Farm and Wetlands in the kitchen and I am going to um, show you so you all got a pumpkin in your activity kit and um, we are going to cut the top off. We're going to scoop out the seeds like we're carving a jack-o-lantern and then we're going to stuff it with something yummy and we're going to bake it in the oven. Today in this video, we're going to make quite a few things that are yummy. Uh, the first thing that we are going to make is a pumpkin custard dessert. And while that's baking, we'll go over how to roast pumpkin seeds, which make a super tasty snack. And then we also will stuff the pumpkin with something savory and festive um, that you could use as a main dish. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get... Um, I think a, a small serrated knife, like a steak knife is really helpful. And I'm going to, um, just like you're carving a jack-o-lantern, I'm just gonna open the top. So just be careful where you're putting your fingers. Take that guy off and I'm gonna cut this right here. I'm just going to go in with my hand to start scooping some of these seeds out. I'm going to save these seeds and we're going to toss them in a little bit of oil and salt and pepper and we're going to roast them in the oven as well. It's a nice um, tip that you can, once you open up one of these pumpkins, you can roast the seeds and get a bonus little snack out of this guy. I'm going to uh, just put all of this into a bowl and I'm going to keep that for later. I'm going to take a towel or a paper towel and just kind of wipe the rest of that goo off of there. If you want, you can take a spoon and you can scrape off. There's kind of this stringy layer. It's helpful to get all of that extra stuff out because it keep some of the liquid down when we bake this pumpkin. So one of the things I like to do with the pumpkin, this is just a two to three pound pie pumpkin. Um, I'm going to make a pumpkin spice flavored custard and we're gonna pour it inside the pumpkin and we're gonna bake it with the custard inside. So I'm gonna take four eggs and this is for a small size pumpkin. helpful to have your ingredients at room temperature if possible. The reason is that it will help the sugars dissolve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of whisk these eggs together and just and then I'm going to measure one cup of heavy cream and I it may seem like a lot um, but it's going to make the custard taste really yummy. I've tried doing this with just regular whole milk and it did not come out as well. So I'm also going to add a little bit of brown sugar, um, two thirds of a cup of brown sugar. And with brown sugar, you know, you can pack it in there and that's going to help you measure. So there's one third of a cup. like to add some pumpkin pie spice. I'm just going to put a teaspoon of that. You can use just cinnamon or you can use ginger or you can um, instead just use vanilla. But I like the pumpkin pie spice because it ends up making this taste sort of like a deconstructed pumpkin pie. So You can also make up your own pumpkin pie spice mix. Um, by mixing together cinnamon and nutmeg and those types of things. I'm gonna mix this and I wanna mix it until the sugar completely melts, but I'm gonna kind of mix it slowly. If I use that whisk, it would start whipping the eggs and the, and, the, and the cream, and I don't really want it to whip. So I'm just gonna take my time. Meanwhile, I've got an oven that is preheated to 350 degrees. And I think it's really important to uh, make sure that all of the sugar is completely dissolved because um, when you pour it into your pumpkin, if the sugar hasn't dissolved yet, it's gonna sink right to the bottom of the pumpkin and you'll end up with a sticky syrup at the bottom, which could be delicious. 
So the other thing I want to make sure that I have a pan, and this is just a glass pie dish. Um, and I'm going to put, I'm going to put my pumpkin in there. I'm also, if you want to bake the top as well, you can just put that in separately. And I'm going to pour a little bit of water, about an inch or so in the bottom of the pan. And that's going to help custard bake. So um, I did also one more thing I like to put in there is just a pinch of salt. And that just kind of helps kind of bring out some of the sweetness and the creaminess. I'm going to pour this in the pumpkin. If it doesn't um, fit all the way to the top, that's fine. This custard actually is going to puff up while it bakes. Um, and so it actually is good to leave a little bit of a um, clearance there. You don't want to fill it completely over, it'll puff right out. If you have a bigger pumpkin, you can add, uh, you can multiply the recipe out or you can, um, you know, just kind of scale it up a little bit bigger. If you have a smaller pumpkin, you can scale it down as well. So I'm just going to pop this in the oven very carefully um, into a 350 degree oven. In the meantime, we can um, bake up some of these seeds. So um, a lot of kinds of pumpkins and winter squash, all of their seeds are edible. And there are some varieties where the, the shell is really hard and I may be less likely to eat them, but for all their sugar pie pumpkins, um, the acorn squashes, and a lot of those, um, they have really, uh, these seeds are actually super easy to, um, to roast up and make into a delicious treat. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna take off um, any big chunks of this stringy pulp. And a lot of times people will tell you to rinse these seeds off and that seems like a lot of work. And I think that's what kept me from roasting seeds um, from the pumpkins for so long um, because it just, it seemed like a really kind of slimy and gooey job. And I have decided that you don't need to rinse off the seeds because the gooey coating on the outside actually makes the seeds taste more delicious when you roast them. So it's going to kind of, the, the pumpkin on the outside of those seeds, whatever is left, is going to kind of caramelize and get brown and um, it's gonna be more nutritious, actually gonna taste better. So I only, um, I like to put a little bit of oil, whatever oil you like to cook with, just a tablespoon or so, um, and some salt and some pepper if you like. You can um, you can also, if you like to um, add something spicy, like some cayenne or some, uh, some something sweet, like cinnamon or um, something kind of aromatic, like cumin, you can um, add those flavors as well. But I think that it is going to, you gotta put some salt on there um, to make it taste good. So the oil is gonna be in there. And I just got a cookie sheet here um, with a little bit of parchment on there. Um, you don't have to put parchment on there if you don't want to, but I like to do that. And I'm gonna spread them out as best I can so that they're in a single layer. I'm gonna cook this in a 350 degree oven for about 15 to 25 minutes. Um, you wanna wait until they're pretty dark brown and, you, and crispy. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna halfway through that cooking time, I'm gonna take a um, like a spatula or a wooden spoon, and I'm gonna mix them all around. Uh, all right, so into the oven it goes. Okay, so here they are, just popped out of the oven, nice and toasty brown. Um, they're pretty crispy, and you can put these in um, a container. If you can save them in an airtight container for several days. Um, but really you could just put them in a bowl and snack on them for the rest of the day. So there you go, super easy, roasted pumpkin seeds, and um, you don't ever have to throw the seeds away from your pumpkin again. Okay, so the pumpkin custard is in the oven, and for a pumpkin of that size, about two to three pound pumpkin, um, it's going to take 90 to, about an hour and a half to two hours to bake. I would start checking it at about 90 minutes, and um, 
and I'll show you, you can kind of slide a knife down to the bottom to see if it if it's solid at the bottom or not so so there it is the pumpkin custard one thing I did want to mention is that um, when you pull it out of the oven you might want to you really want to check to make sure that the pump the custard is solid in there and so I just take a knife and kind of run it down that the edge of the custard all the way to the bottom and make sure no liquid kind of floats back up at you because um, it is disappointing to cut into the custard and and know that it's not set so um, so just check on it. If you do see some liquid come up at you, then just put it back in the oven. This pumpkin, um, it took in in the oven at 350, it took two hours to bake. And there you go. You can see that it kind of makes this sort of two layered thing. You got um, little fluffy stuff on the top and the custard at the bottom. You can put, sprinkle a little cinnamon on there or put a little whipped cream if you like. And there you go, pumpkin custard. So that was how to stuff the, your pumpkin with a yummy dessert, but you can also stuff it with uh, things to make it into a savory dinner. To do that, we'll start the same way by cutting off the top of the pumpkin and removing the seeds and guts. So um, I'm going to just kind of wipe off that and I'm going to move on to making my filling. So this filling is uh, it's kind of a, you can put whatever you like in the recipe. I'm going to start with a small onion and a little bit of garlic. And I'm going to chop up um, some vegetables. So I've got um, some carrots and I've got a little bit of parsley. I'm going to count that as a vegetable too because it's so good for you. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of protein in there. So I have some lentils. I'm going to put about a cup of lentils. And I also like to put some seeds. So I've got couple tablespoons of pumpkin seeds are just toasted up and those are gonna go in there. And then I have, um, this is some um, uh, couscous, uh, the bigger, the big couscous, um, sometimes it's called Israeli couscous, but you can put whatever, you can put um, brown rice in there, you could put um, any kind of grain that you like. You could even, um, you know, put uh, chopped up uh, dried bread cubes in there like you're making a turkey stuffing. And um, I'm going to put about a cup of this, a cup of lentils, and um, and this is a really great way to use up any leftover grains you have um, in your refrigerator, any um, proteins. I'm using lentils, but you can use cooked sausage, you could use um, crumbled bacon, you could use um, ground beef, whatever you like. So. I'm going to, I have a pan here. I'm gonna um, heat it up with a little bit of um, oil. Whatever oil you like to use. This is just some coconut oil. I'm gonna let that preheat a little bit. I'm gonna chop up my onion. Whatever peeling you take off of it, you can put that in a little bowl or a little container for your refrigerator, something like this and you can either keep it lit in your refrigerator or even in the freezer, and you can um, put all your stuff in there, your parsley stems, your thyme stems, your garlic peels, the peelings from your, I've got also these carrots, and I'm gonna take the tops and the tails off of the carrots, and I'm gonna add that to my stock bucket as well. So any of those vegetable peelings, trimmings, um, just keep them aside and you use it to make vegetable stock, or if you like to make chicken stock or bone broth, you can add it to that as well. I'm just going to chop this into little pieces. And my pan is nice and hot. A little bit of oil in there. I got these little carrots that came from the garden, so I'm going to take the tops and the tails off. And I'm going to cut my carrots. If you want to um, do this recipe, if you have a parsnip or if you have a sweet potato or, um, you know, if you'd rather put some spinach or some mushrooms in there, any of those things will work nice. Once you put it into the pumpkin, the pumpkin's gonna cook from the outside, but what's stuffed in the middle is not gonna have a lot of time to finish cooking. So we wanna make sure the grains, the proteins, um, all are fully cooked before you put them into the pumpkin. So I'm gonna chop up my carrots and I'm gonna put them in the pan there with the onions. So I'm going to season this a little bit with salt and pepper as it go, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and kind of just let that cook down a little. I'm going to also add a little bit of garlic, 
So I just like to take the skin off. I like to cut off this little butt. Um, and then I give it a smash. kind of helps me get the rest of that skin off. I just smash my garlic and then chop it, just kind of mince it up. And I'm gonna put wait until kind of the end when all these onions and carrots are getting close to being done before I put the garlic in so it doesn't uh, cook too fast or burn. Getting close to being done there. I'm gonna add my garlic in. Add my couscous. I'm going to add a cup of lentils. And I'm going to let that all get heated up. For this recipe, um, I'm going to add a little bit of orange zest and a little bit of cinnamon. Uh, but you can add whatever kinds of spices and herbs that you like to try. Um, one thing I like to do whenever, I'm, if I'm going to eat an orange, I like to take the zest off of it first. This is just a microplane, a little uh, fine grater. I like to take the zest off of it and then put it in a little Ziploc bag and keep it in the freezer. Because orange zest, lemon zest, even lime zest um, is a really nice, really delicious flavor to add, add so much flavor um, to your dishes. And normally when you peel an orange, you just Toss it away. Add some parsley to this. We can save a little bit for a garnish at the end. Okay, so add some parsley. So the parsley stems can go right into that stock bucket that has my onion peels and my carrot peels. Right there. A little bit of orange zest. That's quite a bit. And cinnamon. I think the cinnamon is going to make it taste really yummy. And I also have some toasted pumpkin seeds. I think that that'd be really nice. It's just a couple tablespoons. Uh, you can add that if you like. You can add sunflower seeds. You can add um, anything else you like. So now I'm gonna add a little bit of dried fruit. These are just um, dried cranberries. And you put a couple tablespoons or a quarter cup of that in there if you like. And that's going to add a little bit of sweetness. I've, I've seasoned my filling and I've tasted it and it tastes good. Um, I also, because we're going to eat the pumpkin, we're going to stuff it in there and when we bake it, um, when it comes out, I like to serve it in slices. So we're going to eat the pumpkin as well. It's not just going to be the surfing vessel. So I like to also season the pumpkin. So I've, I'm going to take a little bit of salt and I'm just going to sprinkle it on the inside. And then I'm going to take my filling and look at that. Ooh, it's got some green in it. It's got some orange. Oops. All right. See that it's got all that good stuff in there. I'm going to press it in a little bit. I'm going to put the lid back on. I'm just going to set it in a baking dish and I'm going to put it in the oven 350 degrees for about an hour um, and you'll we'll, um, test it in about an hour. I'm going to probably poke a knife in to see if it's tender in there. Maybe we'll see some juices kind of bubbling out. If it looks like the pumpkin is starting to get dark, you can put a piece of tin foil around it. While that is in the oven, that gives us an opportunity to talk about all the different kinds of pumpkins and winter squashes there are out there. So I have brought um, a bunch of things to show you, all kinds of pumpkins, and we'll take a look at them and maybe we'll demystify the winter squash. This is a sugar pie pumpkin, um, which looks like a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin, but um, it might be a little bit sweeter, a little bit tastier. You can actually absolutely eat your jack-o'-lantern pumpkins. They may not be the most delicious, but um, it they you can eat them technically. Um, but if you're looking for a pumpkin to cook, to make a pie, um, then the sugar pie pumpkin, this classic old pumpkin, uh, is going to be a great choice. It tends to be a little bit watery, so there are also other kinds. This is 
um, a Cinderella pumpkin. Um, they go by other names as well, a French one that I can't pronounce. Um, and they can be much, much bigger. This is um, a green, this, this is green, but it's a Japanese uh, kabocha pumpkin and is orange on the inside. So the, these kinds of kabocha style pumpkins tend to, um, I think the flesh is a little bit denser and a little bit drier and is sweeter than your pie pumpkin, but you can use them in a lot of sa the same recipes. And then there are a lot of other kinds of um, winter squashes that we can use as well. So this is delicata squash. And delicata squash is really nice. It's got a pretty thin skin, so you can eat it as well. What I like to do with delicata is um, either slit it the long way and open it up like a boat, and then you can scoop out the seeds. When you scoop out the seeds and the flesh, um, with a lot, most of these pumpkins, you can actually separate the seeds out, roast them in the oven, and have them as a snack. Um, and so uh, with a delicata, I like to slit it the long ways and then open it up like a boat. You can fill it with a filling or you can uh, slice it this way and it'll make rings. Take the seeds out and you can toss those rings with a little bit of oil, salt and pepper, any seasonings you like, and just bake them flat in a tray. And then you have these little cooked squash rings and they're super cute and you can, um, you can eat them with the skin on and everything. So delicata is a thin skin, you can eat it. This is a, butternut squash and these come in this is a pretty small one they come much larger as well this has a pretty dense flesh um, it has a thick skin so often you'll see people will peel this and um, what I find the easiest way to peel it is to cut the top and the bottom off and maybe even just slice it down the center and take a, a vegetable peeler and just hold on really tight um, and just peel off the skin with the vegetable peeler and then you can slice it into um, uh, into uh, you know rings or slices or you can chop it into squares and roast it in the oven um, if you're not interested in peeling this one thing you can do is you can just cut it open scoop out the seeds bake those two halves um, either I like to do them face down um, bake them in the oven until they're completely uh, tender and then just scoop the flesh out and then you have a puree this is, I think, called a carnival squash. I actually don't know what this one is called, but it is related to this, which is an acorn squash. They're both acorn shaped. And um, these have a fairly thick skin, so um, you may not want to eat the skin, but because it is ribbed, it can be hard to peel. So with these guys, what I like to do is I like to cut them in half, scoop out the seeds, and just roast them, the, whole, the halves, um, into the oven and, uh, and then bake them. You can you can cut them this way. You can um, stuff them with some kind of filling, or you can just bake them empty and then scoop out the pulp once it's cooked, and then use that as a squash puree. Um, so that's what I would do with those. This is um, also a kind of pumpkin. It's also it's called a red curry squash, and it is a very similar texture, I think, to. Um, the Japanese, the kabocha style pumpkin, where the, the flesh is gonna be drier and sweeter and almost kind of like a chestnut. And um, these are really nice. They come in a lot of different sizes. They come in different colors. And um, this is one of my favorite squashes. It's really fun to grow too if you have a garden. And it is similar to this, which is, I think this is a sweet meat squash. It's gray on the outside. There are other squashes that look, that have a similar uh, color. There's a Hubbard squash, which is sort of like this, but much, much larger. Um, and it can be a little off-putting that this pumpkin is gray on the outside, but on the inside, it really, um, it really is orange. And the last one I wanted to talk about is this spaghetti squash. This one is a little darker in color than you would normally see a spaghetti squash. Often they're very light like this, but the spaghetti squash is very cool. It's not a very sweet squash, but, um, one of the things that makes it so cool is that it has a really stringy pulp. And so um, instead of mashing into a, kind of a, you know, a puree like you would make a, a um, pumpkin pie with, it's stringy. And so you actually can take a fork and, and pull out those strings and then use them. Um, they call it also vegetable spaghetti. So you can use it like noodles and people will, um, I just put butter and salt on mine, but people put, uh, you can put pasta sauce on it if you like. 
This is the stuffed pumpkin. Remember, we stuffed it with the um, couscous and the lentils. It was sort of uh, kind of hot and starting to bubble over. And so um, what I'm going to do is just kind of uh, poke it with a knife just to make sure that the pumpkin itself is tender all the way through. You could also put a thermometer in the center there to make sure that um, your filling is heated all the way through. I'm just going to take a slice out of here. Ooh, it is very hot in there. Woo. Let's see inside there. Put a little garnish on there. Sprinkle a little parsley or something like that on top. This is a nice way to also use up those pumpkins that we kind of buy for decoration around the harvest season and oftentimes we don't actually end up eating them but it's really good food and it shouldn't go to waste. This recipe is meant to be really flexible so you can um, add your favorite kind of protein if you have a little bit left over. I've used um, sweet peppers and black eyed peas in this recipe. I've used um, wild rice and celery and onions so you can uh, this is, a, this is a really nice recipe because you can kind of use what you have on hand or um, whatever your family likes to eat. There you go, beautiful stuffed pumpkin.